Welcome to another edition of Mailbag. Remember, these are comments and questions that you guys leave on my channel that I do my humble best to try and answer, offer comment, or just throw out to the wider community for somebody out there to help you out. Um, as with uh, a number of recent mailbags, I'm doing one header and then the mailbags will follow. So if you sort of read the next mailbag and it looks the same as this, that's the reason why. But before we get going, we must address the normal parish notices, which are, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like uh, videos about this sort of stuff, this sort of stuff, and this sort of stuff, you need to hit the subscribe icon. Save time, hit the bell icon as well, you'll be notified when videos hit the channel. If you like the contents of this video, please give it a thumbs up, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And also, I highly encourage you to leave comments down below. I do read them, I respond to every single comment, and sometimes I even use those comments as subject of videos that I will film in the future. And finally, down there is the TMTG community. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, which I think is a real bargain, you can support the uh, production of videos on the channel. Uh, down there are also the Instagram and Facebook tags where other stuff related to the channel will appear. But now, back to the video. The next one comes from Carl Harrison and it's in response to the Yamaha SY85 um, rant I did in April 2020. And uh, Carl writes, when you first took it apart, did you notice any strange burnt scent? Yet there is no evidence of any burn damage inside. I just bought one and noticed the scent when I took the back off to change the disc drive. Hoping it's just a fluke and is what mother and is what motherboards and such like smell like. Um, so the first thing is these old machines, they have a smell. Okay, when you open up an old machine, there is always a certain smell to them. And there's probably nothing to worry about. Uh, with that smell often when you get it. However, you know, you do need to sort of just have a sort of cursory glance at things. A lot of it is kind of a, a burning dust smell, okay? So uh, that, ha, ha, it just smells burnt, okay? It smells like burnt paper is, is kind of what burning dust smells. And it's the smell you get when you switch on an electric heater that hasn't been switched on for a long period of time. That's the smell you get when dust is burning off. And it normally sort of, it lingers for a while and then goes, but it can be, you know, the plastic can absorb that if that's, if that's going on. Um, so that's the first one. So what I would do is, you know, if you're getting that, it could be the power supply is getting hot. Uh, I'd have a good look at the caps. I can have a good look at the voltage regulators. Because if your caps are on their way out, then the voltage regulators will be working harder, they get hotter, and that produces a, a, an amount of heat. Um, but what I would also do with this is when you open up a keyboard and you've got that smell, is actually stick your nose right down onto the board and sort of do what I used to call the sniff, sniff, sniff test. See if you can identify where on the keyboard the smell is stronger. Because Wherever the smell is strongest, that's probably a good indication of where it's, where something's being generated from. Um, and as I say, my typically in an old keyboard, where heat is generated is <coughs> is the power supply. The power supply is going to be the the place where problems are going to start, and it's always to do with things like caps and voltage regulators. So that's kind of where we where you might need to start. Um, <clears throat> look for things like bulging caps. Look for liquid that seems to be have gone onto the board and stained it and evaporated. Um, if you see any of that, then it's probably a good idea to pull the pull the power board out and do the caps and the voltage regulators. Um, but I might just be tempted to do that anyway. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm tempted to do that on a couple of keyboards I own at the moment. Is is to get the, the new caps and voltage regulators. And the second thing is, don't buy these things from eBay where people offer to sell you kits. And the reason for that is quite often they are inferior caps and inferior products produced from um, 
some place in the Far East that you have no idea about the quality um, and rather than actually fix your unit you can actually do more damage to your unit by fitting these inferior parts. So my, my advice is don't buy kits from eBay. Write down the right the the uh, what the capacitors and what the voltage regulators are. Go to somewhere like Mauser. If you can't find an exact match, get in contact with them and they should be able to give you what the modern equivalent of that particular component is if it exists. There are some things that don't exist. That's where places like Sintol come into, into their own because they quite often will carry some of this stuff uh, in stock. Um, and typically with caps that you're putting on, you're looking for caps that will take 100 volts rather than caps that take less than 100 volts, but that's just standard where electronics is now. Probably someone's going to shout at me for that, but I always tend to put caps that are rated at 100 rather than... Uh, am I talking rubbish? I might be talking rubbish. But anyway, that's what I would do. Now, I do know that the, the, the particular user has written back to me and said that he thinks a lot of the issues are coming from the fact that it's been used in a, it's been gigged and it's the scent of a smoke machine. Um, now, if it is the scent of a smoke machine, the smoke machines have a sweet smell to them. Or most of the smoke machines I've used over my life have had a sweet smell to them, okay? Rather than a, um, either a burnt paper smell, which is what you get from dust, or um, if it's electronics, electronics, when electronics burn, they have a really nasty back of the throat, plasticky type smell. It's very distinctive if electronics are burning. So, you know, you need to kind of sort of dis disintegrate, uh, differentiate between the types of smell. As I say, smoke machines tend to be quite sweet. Um, and that's predominantly to stop people choking when you put the smoke on in a venue. Okay, next one comes from Wayne Murray, um, and I don't have, uh, but uh, yes I do, this was in response to excessive force on the R8 start stop button, a video I did in um, March 2021, and, and what Wayne says is you need a few more props in the background as you should enhance your presentation. Are there enough props around here? Does it work when I film it from this side of the goldfish bowl? Um, and I do, I do um, get what you're saying. So, you know, we are um, coming up to Easter and the whole idea is that over Easter, we're gonna kind of look at rearranging this to, to give me, a, I wouldn't say more space because I've got plenty of space. It's just, where do I shoot from in terms of the video, uh, putting the camera? And I have a lot of space over there to actually shoot from. So that's why the camera is over there and I'm sitting over here or I get the other way around where the camera sits about here and I shoot in that direction. Um, so there's lots of potential. I just need to sort of kind of change the space around a bit and possibly get rid of the, uh, you know, I'm negotiating with the, uh, to uh, replace the curtains. <laughs> so it won't be the orange corner for much longer. That's kind of the idea. Anyway, there you go. Thank you.